r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill. Who is one stranger you remember to this day? My sophomore year in college I would always see this older man on my walk to my math class he always went out of his way to set good morning and ask how I was doing that day. We never exchanged names just two people checking in on each other. I have a lady like this at our local store. I wind up in her lane more than any of the others. Her name is Barb on her name tag and she always says hey girly and we make small talk about our week. It makes me happy. The girl on my running route who asked if she could run with me sometime and I said sure and didn't give her my number or get hers. Now you just got her run there all day until you see her again. I was waiting at the subway station when I hear a man approaching. Bopping his body as he sang watch me do me. Watch me do me. After exchanging pleasantries he looks to the gloves I was wearing. He proceeds to take one off my hand saying ooh wow those are nice gloves. Are those suede? He takes the glove to his face and takes a deep sniffing inhale. Gives it back saying ye that's suede. Nice nice. He then looks over my shoulder toward the station security guard. Takes a small step to the right so I'd block him from view and pulls a bottle of vodka from his jacket. With the biggest grin on his face takes a huge pull and again bops off into the night singing watch me do me. Watch me do me. 10 stroke 10 would watch him do him again. I love those people. They are on a whole different planet and I wonder what that's like. I mean he's on drunk planet. But it's nice. I was waiting for my mom to finish the paperwork to adopt my first dog when I was 4. I looked at a random lady in the waiting area and told her I was going to have a puppy and pointed at the dog. She said what will you name her? I told her I didn't know. She said well she's very fluffy. HM. A muffin is fluffy. Why don't you name her muffin? I smiled at her and walked away to tell my mom. I had my dog muffin until I was 17 and I'll never forget the nice lady who gave me her name. Oh my god this is the best one. I was in a bad car wreck in Boston. I crawled out of the other side of the car and had a panic attack on the side of the busy road. A crowd of people came over to help me. But this one woman stroked my hair and gave me her drink until I calmed down. It sounds weird but it was exactly what I needed at that moment. A couple years ago. I fell asleep at the wheel on my way to my second job. I veered off the road and crashed into a ditch. Luckily. I was going slow. And no one else was on the road. I crawled out of my car. Up the ditch. And for a few minutes. I just sat there. Bleeding from my nose and forehead, hit the steering wheel with my face. And cut my eyebrow. In shock and panic. I just called 911 when this car stopped across the street from me. And this lady popped out and came over to me. She was calm but firm. Asking if I was okay. What happened? Did I need anything? She went back to her car and got me one of those foil blankets. And some napkins and wet wipes to clean myself up, which she helped me with because I couldn't see the cut on my brow. And then stayed with me until the ambulance got there. She was very calming on a chaotic morning. And I appreciated her so much. I only saw her one time after that. A few months later. I asked her about the blanket. And she then disclosed that she was a nurse. To which I replied. Of course you are. No wonder. And was on her way to work the morning of the accident. She ended up being late to work. Because she stopped to help me. I'll never forget her firm and caring demeanor. And I say a little prayer for her every day. My sister and I were in middle school at the time. Eating more food with our mom. Mom decides to get a couple things from the food mart real quick as we're eating and goes to do so. We were in view of the window so she could just look over and see us. Sister and I noticed an old couple at another restaurant. They looked like they were madaging us while we were eating. Made me uncomfortable but I tried ignoring them. My mom popped back out for a moment to check on us. And now the old couple started to throw their own food away and head out. My mom then headed back in to finish shopping. The wife patted her husband's shoulder. Pointed back at me and my sister. And they both sat back down and continued watching us. They finally left when they saw our mom at the checkout and my sister and I simultaneously went off. They were watching over us this whole time. Thanks. Wherever you guys are. Not enough people like you too. This reminds me of an old lady that once did something similar for me. 
I was once coming home from spending the weekend at my father's in the city. My parents were split up and I would take the buses back and forth and have my mom pick me up at the bus station. One time my first bus was running late and caused me to miss the next bus. And have to wait around till the next one came. The city bus lines have stops and there are the bus stations of course. But there were also stops they made in lots where people would wait and line up to get on. This is the kind of spot where I was waiting for my next bus. Because I was there almost an hour before the bus. There weren't many people at the lot and I probably looked like a runaway kid just sitting on the curb with my overnight bag. And I couldn't call anyone for a ride, no cell phones for kids then, and my mom was still at work. An older lady came up to stand on the curb next to me. And made conversation asking which bus I was waiting for. Whether it was just me. Etc. My parents had really impressed the stranger danger mentality on me. So I felt a little weird and tried to act like I was really independent. Yes I was waiting for my bus. I was fine on my own. No thank you I didn't need money to use a pay phone. She seemed to be alright with that. But stuck around like she was waiting for the bus too. So we talked about things like the science museum and what school subjects I liked. After about 30 minutes the bus came. And I got on thinking the old lady would also be getting on. But I saw her walking off down the sidewalk like she was just going to her car PR back to work. At one time. I went to the gum wall in Seattle. My friend put his chewed gum on the wall and this guy came up behind him. Plucked it off the wall and started chewing it. He told my friend any gum you put on the wall is mine. He didn't even look like a crazy homeless guy. He was well groomed and wearing a suit. Never been more unnerved in my life. And I was just an onlooker. This is just any sort of typical experience in Seattle. You should visit Gasworks Park in the summer and check out all the interesting people. Great question and it triggered a memory I haven't thought of in years. When I was 18 I moved to London. Didn't know anyone and used to spend my free time wandering around the city. One night I was probably out too late and in the wrong part of town. Got beaten up pretty bad and ended up in hospital. The next day a man arrived with my wallet that was taken during the beating. He must have stayed taking to me for 2 hours. Just general chat and asking me how I ended up like this. About my family. Home place etc. It was the most company I had had since I moved there and it was at a time I really needed some human contact and I think he knew that. I did thank him but he probably didn't realize just how much I needed him there that day. Edit. The guy found my wallet in his garden. He lived just off the park I got jumped in. I had the name and phone number of my landlord in my wallet. This was pre-mobile phone days. He phoned the landlord who told him I was in the hospital. Feels warm to know people like these exist when the world is pretty effed up. A few years ago. I was waiting to buy a drink at a concert. And this Russian guy next to me said something to me. I responded. He instantly realized that I was American. And suddenly starts yelling you're American. You're going to duck my daughter. I calmly reassured him that I was not. In fact. Trying to duck his daughter. He seemed satisfied with that. Then handed me a shot of really bad vodka and disappeared. I think about that guy a lot. I also feel bad for whoever eventually ducks his daughter. I think he wanted you to duck his daughter and take her to America. Missed opportunity comrade. I was really drunk trying to find my way back to a friend's new house after we got separated walking back from the bar. I was in a dress and heels with no coat in the middle of a Canadian winter. A guy was randomly walking and noticed how drunk I was and offered to help me find my friends. He stayed with me all night. Walking at first and then driving in his car until I sobered up. Trying to find my friend's house. I didn't have my cell phone on me and no money. It could have turned out a lot worse. He gave me a pair of pants and a jacket and when I finally sobered up around 8am I realized that my friend's house was on the street behind his house. Thank you kind stranger for staying with me and making sure nothing happened to me. That kinda reminded me of my friend's story. Because it's about a guy going out of his way to help someone. When she was 16 she went to visit someone in another state. The people got mad at her and threw her out. She was sitting on the ground crying. I guy who looked about 20 came up and asked her what was wrong. She told him. How they just threw her out. 
wouldn't let her get her stuff or call her mom. He told her he was in the service and would help her. He took her up to the door and knocked. Then just told them she was getting her stuff. She did. Then he took her to the bus station. Paid for her to call her mom on the pay phone. Paid for her bus ticket home and waited until she was on the bus. She said. She kept waiting for to hit on her or ask for her number or something. Then once the bus took off she was like. Ro. He didn't even want anything. He did it just because. When I was a kid there was a man who would hang out at the side of the playground. Not because he was being a creeper but because he was really far into special needs and he had a mind of a child. He would stand there as the kids went running by and blurt out hi. I am Larry. He did this for all 5 years of grade school. I think about him often to be honest. He was so happy yet all he wanted to was play with us when we would play kickball or whatever but wasn't allowed to step onto the playground. Edit for answers. So to answer some frequent questions. Larry wasn't allowed on the playground I am sure for liability reasons and Larry was about 30 years old. Also for those wondering this took place in Seattle in the late 80s making Larry about 60 stroke 65 years old I'd guess. This is a total guess though. That's crazy. My dad used to ride the bus every day and would always run into a special needs guy named Larry. Larry would introduce himself to my dad every time he saw him. Then he would ask my dad for his birth date and calculate the day of the week he was born. I rarely ride the bus but I ran into him one time too. Real nice guy. The one sixth grader when I was in eighth. He asked me if I was his dad. I'm female. I said yes. And the kids with him started cheering. This brings back fond memories of being a dumbass in middle school. I wouldn't have cheered too. Overweight guy was ordering in front of me at subways. Literally mid-sentence he stops. Mutters to himself what am I doing and walks out. Edit also subway is gross ass shit and if you eat it you will get hairy man boobs. Anal leaking and penis cancer and also subway hates minorities. There now you know it's not a corporate post. One of the best orders I've been witness to. I'm at a subway. I believe this was in the $5 foot long days. Customer ahead of me orders the $5 one. The sandwich artist asks the beginning trio of lettuce, tomatoes, onions. His response, which to this day has left me marveled with its simplicity and bluntness. Give me double of everything that's free. Ducking brilliant. When I took an abacus course back in primary school, it was my first day and I did not know I had to wear my school uniform for class. So I dress casually. I freaked out, I had anxiety issues when I was younger, and had a panic attack outside the classroom when I saw my corsamates in uniform. A kind lady took me aside to calm me down and coaxed me into taking the class. And she disappeared after she made sure I entered the classroom and sat down. I still remember snippets of the day but I couldn't figure out who the lady was. A course coordinator. Perhaps? All I know is that she went out of her way to take me aside and comforted me. Edit. Extracurricular activity held on a weekend. Was in an Uber in Austin a few months ago and my driver was this super chill ex hippie dude that was forced to flee WA because he ratted out a crime syndicate or something. So then he moved to CA and sold shoes while not actually having an actual residence. He would just flirt with the women that would come into the store and shack up with them for a while until they got sick of him. This was like the 70 stroke 80 s. Then he meets this one girl who he crushes on real hard. But she calls him a man slap and wants nothing to do with him because yeah fact sneers. They become best friends. She watches him go through relationship after relationship and one day they joke about moving to Alaska to sell ice. Apparently that's a thing. And they've been married ever since. Now they have a bunch of boys in college at UT. I was in Austin for 6 hours but this dude made my week with his storytelling. I was walking down the street in New Orleans and a guy I never saw before was walking down the same street in the other direction. Towards me. He saw me. Nodded. Reached out his hand for a high five. It was good vibes. And made me really happy. My credit card got declined at Subway and the lady behind me paid for my sandwich. I thanked her profusely. And then sat down and almost cried. This was months and months ago. But I'll always be grateful for her kindness. Once I was short on funds. 
down to my last few dollars. Not really much in the way of groceries. My paycheck was coming soonish. So all the big stuff would be paid for okay. But I was feeling really low about it. Decided. Duck it. I might as well be full if I'm going to be miserable. So I went to Taco Bell. The lady ahead of me in the drive through paid for my meal. I cried. And put the money into the gas tank instead. Since it was productive and where it needed to go. Ducking like and subscribe. Thank you.